Vanessa, welcome to part two of our diversity and inclusion Q&A. Thank you so much for sharing your story in part one, along with some incredible advice. I think so many are going to learn from your own experiences and welcome back. Thank you, Ellie, and thank you for having me back again. Today, I look forward to speaking to you about all things diversity and inclusion topics. I know that's something that's quite close to your heart as well. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. It would be great to understand how the current gender balance and diversity looks within your team at Zenziac and the company as a whole. So Zenziac is primarily an engineering company. So, um, as one would expect, it's a lot more male dominated. However, I know that we're working actively to have more women. Um, currently, if you're looking at the leadership team, we have a 50 50. So, right on the top, setting the tone, um, mm -hmm. making sure that we have this um, diversity on the leadership team and also that they're working effectively to get more women engineers in the organization. Um, Elia, as you know, I'm also a board member at Fidesmo, which mm -hmm. is also a startup. Um, and I, I, I'm, I'm really proud because Fidesmo is also a very technical oriented company. And it's brilliant that they are also consciously looking to have more diversity in the teams of their um, hiring, uh, you know, more engineers and technical women in the organizations. So it puts me, I feel really good, you know, a good feeling uh, that we're spreading this message around. That's so great to hear, especially having 50% management being women as well, because I think naturally as a woman, if I was to see a company where there was more of a balance on the leadership, I'd probably be more drawn to that business as well, because it's not just talking the talk, it's walking the walk in terms of diversity, right? Absolutely. Yes, yes. I mean, you, and, and it has to start from the top, right? Mm. Because otherwise, how will the message cascade? to the rest of the organization. Um, but, but having said that, I also see that it's very important that we are picking people based on their capabilities. So we, we are looking, we are consciously looking at, at you know, getting more women in, but it also has to have the right, uh, people have to have the right qualifications and the experiences. Um, it, it, we shouldn't be impartial. I agree completely. And I talk about this a lot that, gender or any other form of diversity shouldn't be the deciding factor on a hire, yeah. right? Competence, personality, engagement, all of these things are so important. I have to say that a lot of companies that I support are still struggling to get even 50-50 in the management team. So how do you think that's been achieved? I, I think that is to really conscious effort. I mean, I'm really, really happy to have Erdiad Anderson uh, as our CEO at Zensact. She came in just a, a, a month ago. Um, and prior to her, we had Dennis Nobilius, um, a fantastic leader. He's left Zensact for Polestar. But I, I think it's also what I think is when, you know, our male counterparts spread the word and try to also work actively because that's, I mean, it's, it's one thing to have a woman support a woman. But when you have our male counterparts working with us in this journey, I think that's why Zenzact I see has been so effective today in getting this diversity because you have everyone speaking the same language on the leadership team. How have you personally found it best to promote and nurture diversity in the workplace and also women? I'm, I make it no secret that I, I strongly feel to, to have more women in leadership because that brings um, another completely different aspect when you're working with, with just your daily task as well. Um, I look, I mean, I, I think especially for me, uh, working with my teams, it's also trying to get, because I think women in general don't really like to put their hands up or stick out. And, and I have a little soft spot. Um, I have a soft spot for, for people like that. Yeah. Um, and I think it's, um, you know, helping them to build working as a mentor giving them that confidence to be able to stand up and also help them when, you know, um, somebody's feeling down because let's, let's face it, 
it's not every day is a high and we can have moments and when especially when i see that you, because some people are very transparent and you can see it that they're not feeling really good just now so reaching out that is what i personally do reach out to them and you know uh, try to coach them to um, either hang in there it's just a bad day this will pass this too shall pass mm-hmm. um, and being able to pick yourself up and and embrace another new day because you never know new things can come I mean keeping that positive spirit as well what would be your advice to anyone who's lacking that confidence to speak out in a group to put their hand up if they have an idea and they want to present that I wish I had an answer that was 100% yes, this is the way to go. But I don't think that actually exists. Because, I mean, um, in all transparency and honesty, I've also been in that spot yeah. where you feel like, oh, do I know what's going on here? Um, and for me, uh, what I, when I'm in spots like that, um, because, you know, mustering your courage sometimes to be able to put your hand up and ask a question and you feel intimidated. Um, mine is when I'm not able to do that, write it down, go back, do my research and come back or take the question again, because then I've built my confidence. I've built my knowledge, whatever I was, what was being discussed was, was not in my comfort zone. I didn't know that you can either uh, raise your hand and, and answer, you know, ask a question or go back to your homework and come back with renewed energy to, 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 to dive into the topic. Um, I think the right thing to do is basically ask the question, but sadly, let's admit it. You can't always put your hand up and, and you know, you, when you, when you feel so intimidated sometimes and you get that feeling where, you know, Oh, come on, you don't know what you're talking about. Um, that shouldn't be the case, but, that happens. How yeah. can we try and make a more inclusive environment to, I guess, welcome people to share their opinions? I think it's really being tough and standing up when you see some, you know, wrongdoings or when you see people being put down. It's your conscience really that talks to you, isn't it? Mm. To stand up for somebody else. And I think, um, You know, that is really where it comes from when you help one another, because let's say I I usually ask this question, what's in it for me? Why should I be doing this? But research shows that when you actually do good, it makes you feel good. Yes. So, you know, and especially uh, I'm sorry, I'm in the mood. I'm in a Christmas mood. (laughs) Doing good. Let's do good. Because, I mean, when we help somebody else we're also feeling good about ourselves. So that's in it for me to feel good about myself that I'm able to help somebody else as well. I think now more than ever with the year that we've had, as yes. well, just trying to help, support, be there for people. I always say that my inbox is always open for anyone that is struggling or feeling a little bit lost maybe in their career or just life in general. Don't be a stranger. Yes, I mean, that, that is really I mean, just being there for one another. Within your current organisations, what initiatives are running that you know of to really promote more diversity? I think Sensact is doing a lot. Like I said, an engineering company, they have um, an event that they hold um, called um, Girls in Engineering where it's a whole day they get um, girls from the ages of 13 to 17 uh, from college and and spend the day with them inspiring them how to code or just ask questions talk about the latest technologies so really inspire as you know Zenzact is in the autonomous drive um, the automobile industry uh, where you know come on autonomous drive who doesn't want to be behind that wheel right and leave you know hands off and and, (laughs) uh, enjoy the ride so I'm really happy with the work that they are doing helping others inspiring uh, and in Gothenburg there's a lot of universities around in the area you've got Chalmers and, uh, um, and and I think that's getting the younger generation to work, to inspire them. Uh, and today there's so much, there's federated learning, there's swarm learning, there's deep, uh, you know, deep learning. There's so many technologies and techniques, especially working with data, my hot and favorite uh, topic. I, I love it that, that we are helping the younger generation. That's so amazing to hear that you are focusing on that. 
because this is one of the reasons why I wanted to set up this Q&A initiative as well. It is to create more relatable role models for the younger generation, because I feel the younger generation need more exposure to the incredible things you can do with data, technology. So initiatives like what Zenzact are doing is incredible. Throughout your career, have you personally encountered any gender specific obstacles? Yes, absolutely. I've also, since I have a, a large community, a large mm. network, um, I have people that reach out to me for advice. And um, I mean, I, I also, I know that there's a lot of other, other women out there who feel this in their workspaces, where you have, um, especially in the, in the technology and the IT space, you have people, you have men that don't allow women in the workspace to be partners as part of a team to work together with a common goal. Um, and that is a behavior that I hear of quite often, mm -hmm. which I think that we absolutely need to change because it doesn't work today. Each one of us is working for uh, the betterment uh, on, you know, towards a common goal. And we're a team. So I think that um, we, we need to cultivate a team spirit. Completely agree with you. I have conversations with women working in tech, business, and they also do go through challenges. And it is unfortunate. I feel like we've still got quite a way to go, but everyone needs to do their bit and come on board with this because diversity, it's such an important thing. It makes such an impact in decisions that are being made in the business, the innovation within a business, the creativity, right? Absolutely. And I'd like to also add here, Ellie, because for me, it's not just black and white, you know, um, men and women. I think also we need to start creating policies and implementing policies for how we can include the LGBT community as well in, in our journey. Because again, you know, making us feel good as well. You know, what's in it for me? I need to feel good. I need to make sure that we're open and involving everybody. Diversity is not just for a few people. So how do we open up and, you know, encourage our organizations for diversity on a much broader level? Certainly, it comes in so many different forms, diversity. Gender is just one angle. And yes. I think that's such an important thing that we should be addressing, embracing in every form. There's also neurodiversity. The list is endless and organizations yes. should be aware of that and keeping that at the forefront. I know a lot of organizations are involved when it comes to like Pride Month as well, celebrating that, really making the environment very inclusive for individuals who are within that community. So that's one step companies can take. In the Nordics especially, we're very open and I don't think that we have, um, we, we don't actively not or actively work against um, other communities. But I think creating this space, opening up, talking about it, it promotes your organization as a better place to work in as well. So I think there's a lot of positive energy in opening up, in talking about it. We talk about men and women all the time. And I think now it's, it's time to move to the next level, you know, opening up for bigger communities to be part of this diversity. I think it's just at this point, let's talk about it. Talking about these things are the first step of overcoming the challenges that we're facing and encouraging more inclusion. And, and that is what I have uh, encouraged both the companies that I work with, both uh, Zenzact and Fidesmo, that we need to start looking into this. I mean, as a board member as well, I think it's a responsibility, you know, how do we embrace uh, other communities and be part of, a, I mean, open up diversity. So um, I think that it's, it's, I feel very positive because we have a huge opportunity here to, to help in creating this diversity and spreading the word around. Leading from the front, I love to hear that, Vanessa, and it's great that you're encouraging that within both businesses as well. Do you yourself still notice a lack of women in technology and business? Yes, I do. And maybe it's, uh, I mean, I've always felt that in my career. Um, because IT and technology has always been a place, a, a very male dominated space. Uh, and I guess that's why we do so much to try and promote that and try and change that today. Um, I remember a long time ago where um, 
somebody told me, you know, oh, but you know, it's this is too technical and you won't you won't understand. And I thought, which I said to him, fine, I don't understand. So please come down to my level and explain to me because I'd like to understand. Yeah. And that is something you just need to have enough of thick skin to say, I don't get it. Yeah. So can you please tell me in whatever language you want to speak, because we're both speaking English. So say it to me so that I understand. And I, I, I think that th this is something that I felt and maybe not every, you know, I, I haven't, people haven't been so outspoken as this person, this experience that I had, but you feel it nevertheless. I think that we've just got to keep pushing forward to have more women up so that we can all, because it's, it's, it's a different feeling when you have more women on the team as well, or not more, more women, but women also uh, in the teams with you. It is important to have community, to surround yourself with encouraging women in technology and business, maybe if they're not in your organization, but network, connect on LinkedIn, join groups, just have yes. a support system around you. Absolutely. Um, I, I think that today, uh, I mean, in the past, I used it to my advantage, being the, the only woman at the table. But today, I think there's, um, it's, a, it's a complete different environment when I have my peers also as, as women. Um, I, had, I had a few techniques and tactics that I used to use so that I didn't feel left out. Mm. Um, one was, you know, women, uh, I'm, I'm Indian by birth uh, and I'm, I'm not that tall as the Swedish men or the men, you know, in general. So one of my tactics was to have the highest heels that I could find just so that we're on, you know, eye to eye. <laughs> I know, I I've seen this. Sounds, you know, it's you. You do what you need to to make sure that we're, hey, we're all we're all on the same page here. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I I encourage women to find what works for you, so that you also start to feel comfortable because that's important. I love that idea. That's fantastic. And why else do you think we do have a lack of women in tech? I think women or um, um, girls in general have a tendency to uh, you know be intimidated by maths uh, and and i think it starts there where no no uh this is this is something that is really difficult it's challenging i don't want to do this let's fall into another line um and i think that's where it it actually starts so um what i have uh, i started is this girls in tech an event uh, to help girls understand that maths, science doesn't have to be all that intimidating. It can be fun. So using uh, IoT, because that's where things really happen, things come to life, you can see, um, you know, inspire them to let them know that if you crack the code, it's so much easier and it's so much fun. So I think I see a challenge of starting right from when they are kids that uh, I don't want to do this or technology. Oh my God, it's so boring. Oh, it's so, um, so I, I think that's where it starts and we need to change that to have more women uh, understand that it doesn't have to be that difficult. It can actually be quite fun to work with and uh, inspiring. I have to say on the topic of inspiring, I'm so inspired by what you're doing with your Girls in Tech initiative. That's so important and absolutely incredible work. I'd love to find out a little bit more about that as well, Vanessa. How did uh, that come around? What was the inspiration? How did the process look to setting something like that up? Um, and, and that's really going back to my, uh, my daughters. I mean, as a mother of three girls, I just I'm, I'm brutally honest now when I say that I had my selfish motives and that was to get them to think about science and, and maths. Um, and, and that's what I thought. I mean, being in this, when, when we had the women in tech in Stockholm, um, I, I was, this is an event that gets sold out in a couple of seconds uh, all over the world, I understand. But I was at one such event uh, and I looked around at women and really, you know, eager, enthusiastic women daring to make a difference. And I thought, but we've missed the target because we're already there. We are inspired. We've got it. We need to inspire the ones that are coming after us and how do we get them to start thinking about maths and science and I was at Telia at that time where I talked to some of my colleagues because Telia we were we were just starting our journey into the IoT space then 
And I thought, what if we inspire our school going girls, um, um, those that have to make the decision which line to pick? If we, if we capture them and capture their interests, even if it's uh, two of them from there that we are able to inspire, so be it. We'd be making a difference as, as small as it is. So um, I started my journey at Telia uh, with Girls in Tech. You know, it's a huge responsibility to have girls that you are, you know, looking after, um, I mean, physically as well um, in your environment. So we wanted to keep it to a, a number that we were able to look after, manage. Um, and that's where we, we thought, let's keep it at 20, 25, not wanting to make this bigger. And we had it twice a year. Um, what I think was also uh, fantastic is that there, there are other companies that want to be part of encouraging. So I think companies are definitely on this journey. They see the challenge and they want to help school going girls um, in, in, in inspiring them in, in science and maths. So I had very quickly other companies participating with me. And this year, Ellie, where we, you know, all this time we've kept it very small numbers. Yeah. This year, finally, we decided, oh, you know what, what the heck, let's go big. You know, because we've always had to tell girls, sorry, sorry, it's the places are taken. Um, and this year, when we had 75 uh, signed up, um, oh, wow had to cancel because of COVID-19. Yeah. Yes. Um, and we, and we, um, we tried, you know, when the restrictions went down, we, we thought, what about, let's, let's do this again now, you know, let's consider. But then we decided to just wait because we don't want to be responsible for the spread of uh, the pandemic. Or, um, so we decided to give it a rest this year. However, PwC and I are still very much my colleague, my ex-colleague Ulrika Anderson, um, we're, we're looking at, so what could we do? And this is together with KDH, the, the, the university. What could we do if we had to have such a course online, inspire online, how could we, how could we do it? Mm. Because, I mean, um, the feedback that we got from all these girls was they don't want to have so many people talk to them. They think it's mighty boring to have people just speak to them. They want hands-on. They want stuff to do, stuff to build. Um, and that's the challenge, right? If you're doing an online, online session, how do I inspire? What could I send them? So um, if any, any companies are watching this, if you've got any ideas, please, we'd be happy to listen. It sounds great that you're maybe looking to take things virtual. What, what we also considered was, could we send them a toolkit? You know, come and pick up. Because, you, again, you don't want everybody coming there uh, at the same time. So having times where you come between this and this and, and come and pick up your toolkits. But, but then we also need a kit that they could then work with uh, from home yeah. or yeah. I'm sure next year it will be so worth the wait and it just gives even more of an excuse to maybe go even bigger next year yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, agree. I have to say though thank you Vanessa for the work that you're doing with the girls in tech initiative it really is important thank you yeah. what would be your advice to anyone who wants to set up a similar initiative or community I think that it doesn't take much. You, you absolutely need to go with your gut here. You know, if you feel so strongly about it, whether your whether your you know your reasons are selfish or or or, or you know, I mean, as in selfish as in for me, I had my three daughters that I wanted to push them, and this was my way of giving back to society by pushing my own girls in there. Um, but whatever your motives are, if you feel like you want to make a change, go for it. Um, there are so many companies out there that are eager to help. Uh, I think reaching out to companies with an idea, you know, uh, I mean, it, as soon as you start to talk about it, you will have a lot of people wanting to support you. So I don't think that it's that challenging. Uh, I think like also you don't have to have 100 uh, or a big scale, large scale. Um, Focus on five, focus on 10, because as long as you're um, making a difference, you're inspiring somebody, the word will spread around uh, and you will get the, the desired effect that you were looking for. It yeah. will just happen. 
being consistent, I always say that with initiatives like this, you have to have the long game in mind. It may not be an overnight quick win where you're going to see success straight away, but the more you do it, the more people see the fantastic things you're doing long term you're going to really reap the rewards and your mission is going to be well on its way. And you'll see so many more girls going into an, a career in tech. Yes, we will see it, Ellie. We just got to keep going. Yes, we're on a mission and I love a mission. What more can we do to attract women in tech? I think um, communication, what you are doing is really important because we need to have it out there. We need to have people talk about it. We need to create an awareness. It all starts with an awareness. The work that you're doing here, that this continues, that we spread the word around. Um, I, I think a lot of women have also addressed this where women support women because we have a bad habit of putting down one another, whether it's jealousy or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and that is also something that we need to change because how can we, we help one another, promote one another? and not feel so um, intimidated by somebody else who's super successful? How can we rejoice in somebody else's success uh, as a woman, woman to woman, uh, which is also something um, we need to be thinking about. Supporting, again, it's all about community and empowerment. Can you share any other initiatives, communities, organizations that you're aware of that are promoting not just women in tech, but diversity in tech as a whole? Um, I know my ex-employer, uh, uh, PwC, does a lot. I mean, there's a lot of research also being put into place to identify what are the trends, what do we see, what can we change. And I think another one that um, comes to my mind just now is um, the CVs or uh, the, the job advertisements that go out. Mm. When it is written by a male, I mean, it's so difficult because... PwC identified where terminology used in the CV, you know, you can just disregard a CV when you look at it and you think, oh, this is not me. Um, and they've tried to identify what words used in it that are so male oriented that put off uh, the, the other women. So I, I, I know, I mean, I know of PwC just now uh, that is working towards this, but I, I think that, uh, I think there's a lot more companies as well. Um, that are, are doing a lot of work. I mean, um, I, I read a lot of um, um, HBR articles uh, as well as McKinsey uh, on the topic as well, uh, because I think, um, I, I honestly believe that a lot of organizations are working uh, within this space to create a better environment for everybody. It's interesting you mentioned about the job description side of things as well, because that is something that I talk so frequently about with organisations. The smallest of changes can actually make the biggest of difference in terms of the type of individuals that they're going to attract. What do you think companies can do regarding job ads? What tweaks, changes should they be aware of? When you have a job advert going out, it's usually a team that starts to publish the advertisement but i think what about if you have a uh, you know the team that is creating the job description have more diversity in there so that it's you, know, you have both um, parties looking at men and women that are uh, screening it before actually publishing it maybe that is a, a start because you hear of this a lot because some of the, the jobs you could just look at and you say oh, oh oh no this is not me and you think, why? I, you know, I've got everything in here. Why is it not appealing to me? What is it in, in this ad, you know, job advert that, mm -hmm. that I, don't, I don't fancy? I, I think that is a start because um, uh, I hear this a lot that, uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's terminology, it's text in there that is, is not appealing to women. Yeah, that's a big one. Uh, some words can make such a difference and an impact. And I think as well, it's about maybe simplifying the criteria that you put. When you list, let's say, 15 different uh, requirements, it can be a little bit overwhelming. And as a woman, I know personally for me, if I was to look at a job spec like that, I, I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So I think, oh, I don't have this, I don't have that, you know, maybe three things. So I just would think that I'm not right for the role. Whereas yeah, yeah. I think we need to change perceptions and just go for it. Because 
who even has probably all 15 of those things? I don't think that anyone maybe does, you know, like there's always something that could be missing or something more someone could have. So just go for it as well. Just have that confidence. I agree. Go for it. Because uh, I mean, what's the worst that could happen? Finally, I would love to hear what your advice would be to women trying to get into technology business as a whole. My biggest advice would be to, to follow your instinct. If this is, don't let anything or anybody intimidate you. Um, what is most important is you and the passion that you have and you know, for doing what you want to do. Um, believe in yourself because nobody else is going to do that for you. Believe in yourself, believe in your capabilities and go for it. I think nobody's journey is, is a straight road. Um, nobody's journey is without pitfalls. Um, we just learn, learn to pick yourself up and keep going, whether it's, whether it's technology or whatever you want to be doing. Believe in yourself and, and in your capabilities and you will get there. That is fantastic. And I have to say, thank you again for your time. It is always a pleasure speaking with you. I've really enjoyed our discussion today on diversity and inclusion topics, shared some really great insights. Thank you, Ellie. Thank you for inviting me. Um, it's been wonderful talking to you and sharing my experiences.